Welcome to the Top Rank Marketing Digital Marketing News Roundup. I'm Tiffany Allen. And I'm Ashley Zuckman. Hello, Ashley. Hello, Tiffany. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. Okay, I'm going to kick us off today. Um, there is a new study um, by eMarketer uh, that really focuses on the number of social users there are in the world. Wow. Um, and it, they found that one in three people, which is approximately 2.48 billion, mm. Um, used, social net, used a social network in 2017. Wow. And mo most of the studies we see show active users per month. Um, so I'm sure that number is quite a bit lower, but it said that many people used a social network in the past year. Um, and also it's no surprise that mobile um, is what they're using to access social networks most, most often. Um, Facebook, no surprise, is still by far the top network with 62% of users, and Instagram has about 24%. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, with recent changes in the algorithms with Facebook, um, marketers are kind of all in a tizzy about what they're going to do. Um, but I think this is, helps, you know, provide proof that buyers are still using these platforms, right? Yeah. So it's, um, and you can still have organic impact, um, but you know, obviously a mix of paid and organic is what's going to get you in front of the most people. Yeah, actually what I wanted to talk about today is the Facebook algorithm. Did I steal your thunder? I'm really sorry. Oh, no, it's okay, because it works together. Okay, perfect. Um, so Facebook is changing their newsfeed again to prioritize um, friends and family shares. So content that's shared by people versus publishers or brands. Um, so this might obviously impact your Facebook organic reach. If you're a publisher or a brand, you might want to start thinking about the increased importance of paid promotion in your social media strategy. Uh, so the study highlights the importance of quality content on Facebook, basically. So if it's something that's shareable or engageable or funny or relevant, it's likely to get shared by folks that are reading your content and thus show up in more news feeds than it would just from yours on your own but they do caution against the engagement bait kind of mm. posts that are like, share if you're a type A person. <laughs> uh, don't do that, no one wants, don't do no. that, come on. Do you think that it would be so great if they started providing like a content quality score yes. for brands? Like, this is a 2.9, do better. Yeah, or like, this is a 10, you win, you get the internet now. You get $100 in free advertising. That's all of my posts. That would be amazing. Yes. Oh. Awesome. Um, so slightly shifting gears to influencer marketing, which obviously is a lot of what we do here. Um, so I'm excited to talk about this one. So this is a Trends of 2017 infographic that Marketing Props just published mm -hmm. on their blog. Um, and it uncovers some top trends for, for influencer marketing last year. So interestingly, um, and I think this is something that would make us very happy and our <laughs> clients very happy, um, consumers are more likely to purchase a product promoted by a regular person instead of a celebrity. So a lot of B2C marketing is celebrity driven. There is some B2B as well, but mm -hmm. people just want regular people that they can see themselves relating to. Um, and that's what's actually driving the vast majority of conversions. Um, moms are big uh, online sharers and um, are really great at sharing social images. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that they noticed an increasing trend in last year was the moms are um, you know, even evolving the way that they're doing influencer marketing and talking about products and sharing a lot of photos. So that seems to be working well. 76% um, of consumers find social recommendations for gifts during the holiday uh, to be either important or extremely important. 76%. Sure, why not? Yeah. Um, and 57% of consumers have purchased a holiday gift after reading a review on social media. Oh, okay. So that's something that um, goes to show that writing those reviews, um, working with influencers if you have specific products or services, um, especially around the holidays, is, mm -hmm. a, is a good way to go. Also, Amazon Spark is growing as an influencer platform. So it's currently only available for Prime subscribers. Mm -hmm. um, and there's definitely some B2C influencer potential um, because it's a lot of you know sharing reviews on products. Right. Um, I actually just logged into it today. And it's really interesting. There's lots of really cool stuff in there. And it's super dynamic, too. So it will change as you search for more things. Interesting. Um, it's funny because Snapchat is definitely the platform that talk a lot about in terms of influencer marketing, but 74% of people surveyed said that's the one that they would drop first. Really? A Snapchat. Interesting. Um, and lastly, um, big news, apparently sponsored content isn't all that bad. Oh. Um, in fact, 30% of U.S. consumers have made a purchase from sponsored content, so um, it works. Yeah, if it's in the well, right spot the story. and you're looking yep. for it, then it doesn't matter who exactly. put it there. Exactly. Definitely. Well, actually, I have some news from the future, maybe, of influencer marketing. Ooh, do tell. Yeah. So new research from Business Insider Intelligence identified ways in which brands will be working with influencers in the future and how they can better manage those relationships. 
Um, so influencer marketing ad spend is poised to reach between $5 billion and $10 billion in 2022, Ooh. which is a five-year compound annual growth rate of 38%. That's pretty climbing. amazing. Absolutely. Um, the average influencer engagement rate for content across industries is 5.7% versus 2 to 3% for brands. So folks are engaging more with influencer content or influencer driven content versus just straight up branded content, which of course is something, you know, if it's coming from somebody that is like you or someone you know or someone you look up to, you're more likely to look into that content than if it's from like, you know, Joe Schmo brand selling mm. eyeglasses or whatever. Um, but what's really interesting, I think, is that 40% of influencers think that brands are overly restrictive when they work together in terms of their freedom to create content in the way that they would like to. And that's something that we run into a lot. We'll have you know some clients that say, you know, we want to tell our story. Like these are the very strict guidelines, and that's sometimes we have to coach our our clients on that. That you know, this is an individual who there's a reason you're partnering with them. They have a lot of credibility. They're known for you know, speaking a certain way and to try and dictate what they're going to say or what they're going to write um, would not be genuine, it wouldn't be authentic, and right. the audience probably would recognize that. Yeah, authenticity is key. And I think we actually saw this year at Content Marketing World, there was a presentation by Elise Ann Rand from Estee Lauder about how that actually happened with Chrissy Teigen and one of their influencers, mm. where they gave her kind of the run of the show and they saw amazing results from it. So it's something that's happening right now in our industry. If you're industry. going to work with influencers, trust your influencers. Absolutely. That's all the news that we have for you this week, but there is more in the blog post, or you can follow Top Rank on Twitter at Top Rank, or me at Tiffany underscore Allen. And you can follow me at A. Zekman on Twitter, and we will see you next week. Thanks. Bye.